hi guys welcome to the video today we're going to do something um and it's pretty I'm, I'm really excited about it so it is matching watercolor colors to the pastels that we swatched out in the last video so first of all i'm just going to show you a little bit of a little behind the scenes glimpse of what i've been doing recently so i just got this new sketchbook and i've been putting um just sort of the cover page in so been trying out a few different pencils and different supplies in the back of it um, so I really enjoy the back page it gets filled with just trying out all kinds of different mediums and then the other thing that I did for the new year is I have a video on this this is my Chic Sparrow Travels notebook and I have a, an A6 Apica notebook in here so every year I get one of these it's kind of like a scratch pad so it's a very small kind of compact setup but I can use it I can just sort of have it on my desk there to grab and to try out different swatches and um, every year I kind of put in their new uh, like different supplies that I'm using so I can go back and kind of think about like what um, what supplies I was using or what mixes that I was um, enjoying and things like that. So I find this really helpful because not every page is pretty. They, it, it is just for me to kind of grab and to swatch things and to try things, to try mixes. Um, and some of the pages I do like and I do go back to and some of them, you know, it really doesn't matter if it if it works out or not because it's just kind of... Um, yeah like a little uh, place where I can just try things out so um, yeah so the first thing that I did for sort of uh, art related for the new year was just take that old one out and then get a fresh one in here so this will be the fifth year that I am using one of these and you can see like by the end of the year it gets really chunky and nice um, yeah and I have already started this one so um, you'll see in a minute but I just did a page of different so I'm kind of looking for different olive greens and so yeah I'm trying out like a few different ones that I have there and um, you can see here as well one of the things I like about using this notebook because it's not a watercolor one but I, you can see how beautifully the watercolor sits and dries on this paper so that's one of the reasons I really like um, that notebook and then at the back of this I also have like just some um, cotton paper so this is also a setup ready for if I want to take this on the go. So, but we're going to use the Holbein White Ibis today this is my favorite probably um, watercolor sketchbook at the minute so you can see that in the front there I've been working on um, a sketch of a door that I found on Pinterest and but we're going to do this kind of a setup today so I really enjoy um, you know like on the channel I have like the old plates and the kind of Prussian inspired plates so I have taken one of the printables from my shop and then I'm just kind of using that to create a plate on the side here and just a few different little elements so that's what we're going to like, work on today um, once we figure out the colors that, that once we match the um, pastels to watercolors um, but you can see here I've also used this page while I had it out um, I thought it'd be nice to kind of do to use it to create like a different page so we won't do this in this video but you can always try one of these and you know do one of these so we'll do it in another video but you can see I very simply sketched a table and then these kind of triangles for the poofy kind of uh, table linen and then I've just done some round circles where the plates will go just lightly sketch the circles I've sketched the floral garland in the middle and then I'll just take the printable and kind of look at these plates and just um, yeah use that to kind of draw some of these plates in and create a little banquet and um, a place to just do some really nice kind of watercolor things so you can see like the little serviettes there I'll I'll put those in here 
and some of the fruit on the table and some of the different little elements there as well so I just wanted to show you that as well so that will be coming up you know in another video but definitely in the meantime it's something um, you can enjoy so okay so but what we're going to do first today is we have this um, selection of pastels and I showed this in the last video it was the, the haul video so I'm not going to go through and sort of talk much about these because that's all in that video but I'll just kind of show you here so you can see the numbers um, and the brands for the pastels so we're just going to swatch those out and then we're going to match some watercolors so these are all um, colors that are already in palettes that I own so see if you can guess or even like stop the video and go and try and mix or um, you know use colors that you have and see if you can match any of the colors to these pastels Okay, so we have all the pastels swatched out there. So I'm gonna kind of talk you through um, what I am using to color match those pastels. So the first thing is one of my favorite mixes, kind of a neutral tint mix. And this is, they're both Daniel Smith, the uh, Hematite Violet and the Luna Black. So you can also use a black, a purple and a dark brown to create this kind of a moody mix. This is one that I really enjoy. So the next one is a mix. I have a video of how I pre-mixed this color. So it's um, Windsor & Newton Caput Mortuum and white. So you can use any of those type of colors. And then this one here is a Turner Artist watercolor. It's the Pale Wisteria, I think. But again, you could use an ultramarine violet and a lot of white or like a purple and white. Uh, this one here is in the video as well so that I that I mixed so this I think is the Kaput Mortuum it's the Daniel Smith Organic Vermilion and the Grumbacher Titanium White so any kind of like a really nice white you want like maybe Kushminka might have a really creamy one so this one here is the Isaro Buff Titanium um, I'm really enjoying the, I've been really enjoying the Isaro watercolors. And then this one here is the Windsor and Newton Davies Grey. So it's just a really beautiful muted uh, green grey. So this one is the Daniel Smith Fuchsite. This is one of the first colors of professional watercolor that I got and I still really love it. It's got a little bit of a sparkle in it and you could use a bit more water to actually water it down and get like get it to perfectly match that shade but I just um, kept it a little darker 
And then this one is one that I created. Um, this is something like a mix of like a phthalo green and white and also um, stone ground paints. It looks like they have a gouache that's in a very similar color to that too. So this last one here is the uh, Holbein Compose Green. It's a very minty green, a very pretty color. So yeah, you can see that those are very tried and true colors on the channel, the colors that I really enjoy. Um, and what I also did, I, I added another one here. So I went and got a pastel. This is a little Jack Richardson half pastel. And we also color match this because I wanted to use this color in with the palette in the um, painting that we'll do today. So the colors that we use to color match this is the Daniel Smith green gold mixed with the Daniel Smith French ochre. So something like an ochre and a green, um, yeah, and it's just a really beautiful color and like a beautiful addition to this palette. Okay, so back to what we're actually going to paint with this little palette we've created. So um, I'm just going to show you a couple of other examples of these kind of plates and um, this one we did on the channel but I've just been adding to it every now and then so it's still not quite finished and yeah I just add little bits and pieces to it every now and then. So. This is a page that I did in 2018. So this is actually a really large sketchbook, um, maybe 12 by nine. And you can again see that just there's the, the side of a plate and then a teacup. Here's another page in this sketchbook. So, um, you know, I want to give you examples as well of things that you can just uh, paint and create as well. So, um, yeah, we're starting with this uh, mix of the green gold and the French ochre and we're just going to paint the pairs, the little pairs. So again, this is just a really nice uh, practice and relaxing. So I, I want the um, things that you're kind of trying in your sketchbook just to be um, enjoyable and, you know, not not pressured or anything. So. Yeah, you can see that we're just starting with this little mix and then you can add a little bit more of the green gold and a little bit more of the French ochre and just drop in more colour to sort of create a little bit of variation in the pair. So the other thing you can see that I'm doing is leaving little bits of white. So we, in watercolor, we preserve the highlights 
and I'm thinking about that as I'm going along but I'm also just trying to create little bits of variation you can see that I'm not using a whole lot of water here I'm just dipping my brush in the water then I dip it into the paint and then I'm painting um, like that so my my page is not covered in water uh, there's not a whole lot of water so it's not taking everything too long to dry either so I'm able to um, continue painting paint things next to each other you know sometimes if you're using more water you'll have to let those things dry um, you know like the, the little element where they're side by side there and yeah so we just continue to build up the uh, the plate and again this is a really nice thing where you can just kind of look at color palettes look at the way um, colors interplay you could paint this you know several different times in different colors and try you know try different things so, okay so we are going back to this mix of the lunar violet and the hema yeah lunar, lunar violet, hematite violet and I am doing kind of a background if you've seen any like of the Royal Dalton plates or the Prussian plates they often have like a really sort of floral background in this kind of area of the plate so I am using that and then I'm just creating these little flowers and again going into the center and dropping in a little bit more color to darken that up so I do that several times while it's drying until I have it sort of um, you know at the like value that I'm looking for um, as dark as I'm looking for so yeah just going around and I'm not overthinking this I'm just putting flowers in and then I am I'm taking an actually a smaller detail brush here and I'm just putting two flowers two leaves for every flower so you can see that I'm facing the leaves different ways um, yeah one leaf is bigger one is smaller just to create that little bit of um, interest and then I'm going into these kind of emblem um, parts that we created and doing like a little roses so yeah little roses from a side view and then adding some little leaves and again bringing back that kind of chartreuse color like the or like the olive olive green olive yellow color and so then I want the um, the background to be more filled in so I'm going in just basically with a very watery mix of the hematite violet and I'm creating little curves and then one end of the curve will have a little round leaf and then through the curve there'll be a couple of different leaves on either side of it so just filling in the spaces with these curves you know curving around the pair curving around these little round kind of medallions okay so for this area because I decided that there was you know enough color on the plate so we needed something a little bit more neutral in this area so I've gone with the buff titanium which might be a, um, a bit of an unusual choice but it's just making a nice neutral backdrop for all the other colors and so because the other colors have dried I can kind of glaze over them I'm trying to sort of just go around them and you can see that 
when I get uh, closer to like the little floral elements I'm just basically using I'm just dipping my brush in water and just using water to kind of move little bits of that color around then I'm adding more of the color you know towards the inner rim of the bowl so you can always go back over the floral elements or something like that if you want to um, darken those up as well so that's all I had time for for this video and all I had storage for but um, what I wanted to do was actually so I have a, an old tutorial uh, on these transparent florals and I wanted to create some of those sort of coming out from the rim of the plate here and then sort of moving on to the other page and then we would do like a liberty print in that kind of area uh, across the page there so that might be something that we do on the channel or it might just be something well we'll see I, I, hopefully i'll do it on the channel but um yeah so that is very it was just a very nice little um video that i actually just thought about uh, whether i would have enough storage to do this so it's kind of a last minute thing but i hope you enjoyed it and then uh, let me just catch you up on a couple of other things that we have been working on so i kind of left you at a little bit of the um, knitting this beret and then I have wound up some other like bright brighter pink and I actually ended up so the pattern called for purling a couple of pearl rows and I just did not like the look of it so I had seen a video where um, a girl actually um, picked up the stitches for a jumper like a sweater and then she cut into it and um yeah redid it so that was my that was kind of I'll, I'll link that video below but I basically picked up stitches I didn't know if it would work and I pulled those um, rows undone because I did not want to lose all that lace work so um yeah so that is going pretty well and again you can see that like the color inspiration here so I just kind of show you um we can actually match some watercolors to those yarn colors so this one here is daniel smith opera rose quite a lot of companies create an opera rose it's just a beautiful vibrant pink and then this one here is holbein lilac so yeah again like color inspiration for watercolor can come from a lot of different places So I've also finally put in a heel. So I did the um, twin stitch heel, shadow wrap heel, I think it's called. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's uh, it's a lot more finicky on tiny little needles, but um, yeah, it's getting it's getting there. And then we have been doing some more baking. So it was my youngest brother's birthday this week, and I used to. I, showing you some photos here like I really enjoy decorating cakes but usually I'll just buy like the sponge cakes insert you know the actual cake and then I just get the fondant and I am decorating it I don't really love doing the baking portion um, but we have been doing some baking around here so yeah um, working on that portion rather than the decorating I guess so we did break some bread our first loaf of bread it actually turned out pretty well um, yeah and then we baked some eclairs for my brother's birthday um, and also a cake so um, yeah we created this like whipped cream we tried blueberries and raspberries and I uh, pink I don't I didn't think he'd want pink but I wanted to put it in the middle of the cake because I thought um, it would have a nice like flavor to it so the raspberry whipped cream actually is really more tasty the blueberry whipped cream really was just did not have any taste so yeah um, that was that and then the eclairs 
yeah you can see like we put that in the middle it was actually quite nice in the middle like it was a nice addition and then we uh, we sort of just fudged the eclairs we sort of opened them and then put the whipped cream in we didn't really do um, like the piping and yeah but it worked out okay and um, we're still working on that so yes um, I hope you guys are doing well I hope you're having an enjoyable start to the new year and I will see you in another video soon bye guys mm -hmm.